Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Today we're building the Instrument Interface V2 by Befaco. This module allows you to input signals from the outside world into your modular. It features a combo XLR and quarter inch input where you can plug in your microphone, guitar, bass or line level device. There's a switch to select between line, high impedance instrument and synth. And another switch turns on the 48 volt phantom power so you can use condenser microphones. There's also an LED VU meter and a nice large gain knob. And that's not all. The module also includes an envelope follower, complete with level and threshold controls, trigger and gate outputs, positive and inverted envelope outputs, and attack and decay response faders. All tightly but ergonomically accessible on an 8HP black panel. In the kit baggie you get a printed build guide, the panel and the two PCBs, which you need to detach from each other and remove some tabs from the factory. You also get all of the hardware and electronic components, headers, knobs, fader caps, nurlies for mounting, and the power cable. Befaco projects tend to be a little dense, so do take your time and build this with a clear head. I start with the resistors, diodes, and ferrite beads for both boards. Measuring the resistors first, I then turn the board around to trim the leads and touch up the soldering. Next come the IC sockets. I used the panel to hold the sockets in place while I turned the board around to solder. I solder opposing corner pins on each socket first to secure them, then go on to the other pins. Let's move on to the capacitors. The ceramic and film ones first, which are not polarized. Now the electrolytic caps, make sure these are correctly oriented. Install the transistors, making sure they match the orientation on the silk screen. Snap the ICs onto their respective sockets. Now install the headers that will connect both boards together. Again, I use the panel to hold the headers in place while soldering. Many of the electrolytic caps came with folded out terminals which wouldn't fit in the board. So I first straightened them out with pliers, then installed them, again minding their correct polarity. These are the ones that go all over the back of the main PCB. Now add the two big caps and the huge one then the power header. I use the snake charmer technique while holding the header. Just don't touch the pin being soldered or you'll get burned. Attach both boards together and solder on the female headers on the control board. Install the metal spacers. Then trim down all of the leads that go underneath the sliders to make sure it snaps on snugly and doesn't short anything. Now let's start placing the panel components, starting with the sliders. Then the big combo jack that goes on the main board. Also on the main board go the VU LEDs. Make sure you order them by color, red on top, then two yellow and three green. Now back to the control board, place but do not solder all of the jacks, switches, red LEDs and pots. Attach the panel and tighten all of the nuts. Then turn it around to solder. Then attach the main board and proceed to push the VU LEDs through their holes. Here you can choose to place masking tape on the panel to keep the LEDs flush. I let mine come all the way out though, which looks cool too. Screw on the combo connector and finish tightening the nuts. Snap on the knobs and you're done. Just check the power header for shorts and plug it into test. I hope you liked this video. Make sure you check out the demo video as well, where we see some of what this module can do. See you soon and stay noisy.